that's in about oh, 30 minutes for us, which can only mean it's time for our favourite wine. No, see what I've done here. You're not a wine old Tom, but the producer wrote it. It's Tom Canavan! <laughs> Tom, a lot of people say to us, they feel it's like permission to open a bottle of wine when they see you on the TV on a Friday night. I love that. So I've got the power, I can just three, two, one. And oh, we go. you've got the power, Fantastic. Tom. Something, really something seems to have happened tonight, though. I'm just noticing. Uh, what's happened here? Have you been pouring the measures tonight, McManus? Well... <laughs> this you detox know. is going well. Michelle, and we've been through rehearsals and you're the same again there. Well, no. Crikey. That's, that's not what you would really pour your wines like, is it, at home? Of course! This I'm is all that's left for me. It really me. upsets Look. me when I go to a restaurant and they give me a slather. I, don't, I want a nice full wine glass. OK, enough about me and my... Wine drinking antics. Tom, what are we talking about tonight? OK, tonight, you know we've been going around different grape varieties, different regions. Well, tonight we're going to one of Europe's big producing countries, Portugal. But it's one that we don't really think of as having a really good reputation mm. for wine. Or it's got, had a bad press in the past, things like Matthias Rosé, I guess. Yeah. It's had a bad press, I guess, from the 70s, you know, when, when the Matthias Rosé, not that it's actually a bad wine, the, it, it, it's quite acceptable, but with wines like that, got a kind of reputation as being part of the 70s and things mm. didn't move on, but that is just far from the truth. Portugal's a really vibrant country, it's got a lot of really interesting grapes, a lot of grapes that we don't get from elsewhere, a lot of really good switched-on winemakers, and in fact it's offering great value for money. We're ready moment. to be persuaded, aren't we, Michelle? Well, good. it's a hard job, Stephen, and someone's got to do it well, on Friday afternoon, Michelle's so... Looking set to go. <laughs> well, listen, we're starting off with a white wine, and it's a Vigno Verde. Do you want a hand there? Yeah, I need two hands left up. Vigno Verde is the wine that probably a lot of people have heard of. It's served in all the restaurants in, in Portugal and matches the fish really well, you know, the fresh sardines straight from the beach, you know. So it's a Vigno Verde from the north of Portugal. This one is the Quinta de Azevedo. It's in Waitrose at £6.49, and for me it's one of the best of the Vigno Verdes out there just now. Have I'm not going to swirl, no, just because it's swirl. a wee bit full. I'm have, just going to taste. Have a taste. And it's got that beautiful That's fresh nice. fruit. It's crisp, it's lemony, but it's got a lovely kind of freshness. and just gets your palate set up to have some food, which is really what the wines like this are meant for. And again, you said good with fish and everything else, just as you said. Match this with mackerel, with sardines, with those kind of oily fish. It's got the acidity to cut through it, but it's got beautiful fruit too. And I think, you know, it's made from some Portuguese grapes called Lourerio and Perdela, ones which are not very familiar. Mm. But quality grapes, quality wine, and I think it's lovely stuff. All right, let's lovely. stay with white. What else have you got for us, Tom? OK, we're moving on to a different region of Portugal now. And this one comes from a region called Estremadura which is not quite so famous, I guess. Um, Estremadura is down further south, so a bit warmer. Near this the Algarve, which people will know, I guess. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. In fact, this area just starts north of the Algarve and stretches up into, into Portugal. And it's made by a young woman winemaker called Sandra Tavares, who's one of the real kind of hot properties of Portugal wow. at the moment. And this one's a blend of Chardonnay, which we all know, and it's blended with a local grape called Arinto. So have a little try of this one. Okay. There's no oak in this again. It's a fresh style. But it's that little bit richer, I think. Yeah, I prefer that actually to the first the first wine. And I like that one. Lovely it's weight, lovely. isn't it? It kind yeah. of fills the palate. Really nice. There's orange there. There's like a kind of limey fruit, quite a kind of fat, limey, lemony mm. quality. Like that one. This one's a bit more expensive, isn't it? It's a bit more expensive. Now this one comes from Corny and Barrow. They've only got one shop in here, but you can phone them and get them on the web. It's nine pounds fifty-two. This one, so a good bit more expensive, but. You know, again, as always, a really good quality. Sorry, what's this wine called, Tom? I kind of missed the name there. This I think. is <laughs> <laughs> this is the <laughs> this is the Quinta de Chocapala. <laughs> Quint the, the what? The what? Come again, there, Tom. Quinta just means Quinta? farm or estate. Quinta yeah. is just like it's just like chateau in France. So it's the Quinta de Chocapala. Well done. Do you want to try and see that? No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> From Estremadura. I'm par partial to a nice red, and so is Michelle, obviously. <laughs> yeah. She's not left me very much. Oh, no. is that all you got? That's Did that's I drink all? That's all that's left. You get, well, what have you got for us? <laughs> well, Stephen, I'm sorry about that, but listen, this one, Choice reds, one. again, Portugal Aye. makes lots of reds. <laughs> this one comes from the Alentejo, um, a big region of Portugal, quite close to Lisbon, and it's made from a whole blend of... Portuguese grapes, I won't bother naming them all because there are four or five of them, with a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, aged in oak barrels and terrific value for money. This is uh, a, a wine called Tinto d'Anfora. It's a red, it's only £5.99 in <laughs> Sainsbury's. Yeah, so have red. a little taste, a little... A little I, I like that. A little, isn't that lovely? Yeah, I'm quite surprised by that. It's really nice. It has that black fruit, a lovely pure black fruit. 
but there's something slightly Ooh, floral about it. I like it that. Too. I'm not a red wine fan. I love that. Isn't it lovely? It's smooth, Michelle. I think that's why you like it. You know, oh. it's not too rough. It's Please don't convert me to another type of wine. Well, I don't have much room left on the list, but yeah. I could possibly <laughs> add this one on. Fantastic big wine as well for matching with the winter dishes. The you know, stews, casseroles, like stews, yeah, chili con carne. It's got the fruit. It's got the power. I think it's a really lovely wine. I think a great cross section of the, the new Portugal. You know. Change your preconceptions, go out and try these wines. They're not too expensive and great quality. Okay, what about next week? Where are you taking us now? Great journey, wine journey around the world. It's a journey at the moment and we're going to somewhere which is quite obscure <laughs> to most people in the UK. We're going to Austria for the wines next week. Now, Austria's not one we see a lot of, but some really good wines from there. So I've picked out three which I think are really nice. No antifreeze in them, no? <laughs> Absolutely not. That was <laughs> That's That's a long ancient time history. Ago. Ancient That's history. history. <laughs> Tom, oh, thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Tom. Thank you very much indeed. And always responsibly, of course, as well.